welcome back to my channel so so blessed with glenda so so if this is your first time joining my channel um do subscribe and hit the like button and if you are a subscriber to my channel thanks again for joining me for another wednesday on so so blessed where we like to um encourage you know by this video hopefully you are encouraged um so yes thank you again as always i am excited to talk to you about what god has given me to share in hopes that it will encourage you in some way that you will find yourself growing from these videos as i am as he feeds me and gives me the words i you know, I have to take this, my own um, encouragement for myself as well. So it's not just for you, but it's also for me. So we are in this together. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. i um, going to go ahead and do our prayer. So wherever you are, let's just look to the Lord. Father God, we come now to say thank you as always. We thank you for your people. We thank you for your sheep. We thank you for the ones that will gather here. And look at this video on this channel. We thank you, God, for their uh, desire to hear an encouraging word uh, by your Holy Spirit as you use me as a vessel to speak and deliver that encouragement, oh God. I thank you that it will touch, heal, and deliver, oh God. Lord, those that may not know you that come across this channel, but they are your sheep, I pray, God, that their hearts will be pricked. I pray that they will be touched, oh God. And I pray that ultimately they souls, they will be converted, oh God, so that their lives can be transformed, Lord, to serve you. And Lord, we just thank you as now I get ready to share this word. I'm asking God that you, Holy Spirit, will just make it clear, or Lord God, that um, it will be edifying to the body of Christ, oh God, that it will be nourishment to us as we continue to walk this journey together. As always, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you. And we give you glory in your son Jesus name we pray amen all right guys thank you listen I my last video I believe um we talked about um this word detour and I kind of gave you an introduction on what the Holy Ghost was giving me on last week we just had such an awesome time I hope that you know you guys have had a, a blessed week so far a weekend and today is just um uh well it's when this week Recording goes up on Wednesday, but it's actually Monday. So, hope you had a blessed service on Sunday. But yeah, last week the Lord just began to um, minister to me. Um, you know, I think I shared with you all that I love writing. This is one of the gifts that God has given me, and I often thought that my gift would be used in the form of writing plays, which I did do that for some time. I was doing that for a season, writing plays and. And I would do plays in my church and other churches, um, acting out the word of God, doing illustrations of the word of God through plays. And it touched many hearts, touched many people's lives. And um, so that season, I don't know if it'll return, but right now I'm not in that season. And I I felt like, um, you know, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't written in a while. And so I kind of was thinking about it, um, maybe, I think it was last week. Somehow it came across my mind and the Holy Spirit kind of just encouraged me and was telling me that, um, you know, I woke up one night, I believe, and the Lord just was feeding my spirit. And usually when he does that, you know, if like dreams and things, you know, usually when I have dreams, uh, I'll get up and write them down. I keep a, a, a book and a pen in my nightstand. But this night, the Lord woke me up and was feeding me encouragement. And so I got up and started writing it down. And that's where this video stems from. That's where these words uh, is coming from. And he shared with me, he said, you're writing. You can still write. And so this is one of the ways that he's giving it to me now. So as he gives me things, I'm going to be reading and sharing with you the writing, my own writing and how God gives it to me. And I hope that it will uh, inspire you uh, and encourage you and uplift you as it does me. So... That being said, I'm going to go ahead. I have my tablet here. So this is, again, my own writing and what God has shared with me. And let me go ahead and get my trusty cup of coffee. <laughs> All right. 
I think we're ready to start now. Okay, so we were talking about detour. And of course, when you think of detour, before I read, go into this, um, you know, we think of detours uh, when you see a sign, right? I think in my introduction of this video, if you read down in the description, um, you know, I've been driving, and I'm sure that this happens to some of you out there, many of us out there. You know, you're driving, and you, especially if you're in a rush, and you need to get somewhere, and you know you already have your route, you go to this place a hundred times, and you already have the quickest route to get there. And all but to come up against a detour sign that now is going to cause me to have to go another direction. I'm going to have to figure out another direction if I don't already know one. Now i got to figure out how to get to this place in a new direction, right? That is so frustrating. That to me, there's that is one of the most frustrating things when I have to now figure out a way, and especially if everybody that's in this traffic, you know, everybody now has to be, a uh, uh, detour to another route and you're trying to look at which car may know where they're going and I'm gonna follow this car because they look like they might know where they're going and you know well one car is going that way which way do I go you know if you're in an area that you're not familiar with and you only know one way to get to this place to this destination and now you're throwing off course that is so frustrating you know when you see these detour signs well this is what our spiritual walk so I'm, I'm comparing this this word detour to the detours that happened in our spiritual walk with Christ, our spiritual life, okay? So that's what this ride is about, and that's what the Lord gave me one day. And I don't know, you know, what I might have been dealing with in my own personal life, and he started speaking to me in this manner. And I'm like, oh, wow, God, okay, thank you, thank you, okay? So I'm just going to write, read to you what the Lord gave me, and then I'll kind of just uh, explain it and, and expound on it. All right, so to detour or not to deter, that is the question. You all know the uh, Shakespeare, to be or not to be. So that's kind of where I got this little catchy phrase from. To detour or not to deter. That is the question. To deter, you know, we, we uh, to prevent, you know, um, some things, you know, are in our life. Um, God is trying to prevent, He's, you know, it's a deterrence, right? It's a deterrence. So to detour, which one of these? That's the question. Well, let's, let's read on. Growing in grace, talking about growing in grace, means accepting truth and the possibility of many detours in the life of a Christian believer. God's grace is extended to us, enabling us to endure many, many twists and turns in our journey to heaven. Now, I'm reading my own handwriting, so I may stumble because I was writing fast. So I have to go back and try to figure out my own handwriting. <laughs> so I'll read that again. God's grace is extended to us, which enables us to endure many twists and many turns on our journey to heaven. When it comes to life's journey, we often become comfortable or complacent with the road or direction we've chosen to take. You know what I'm saying? That familiar road. I'm used to going this way home every day. I take this route every day to work. I take this route going to the grocery store. I take the same route every day. You're very predictable when it comes to certain destinations, right? Okay. We're right along. Let me get my pages. I'm stuck here. Consequently, this behavior can at times necessitate unwanted detours in our lives. You hear that? When we're so when we become complacent, when we become comfortable with the same road, the same direction, the same, consequently, this behavior can at times necessitate unwanted detours in our lives. You know, we can't get too comfortable. I believe the word of God, I believe it was Paul that said, um, he said, whatsoever state I'm in, therewith I learned to be content. He wasn't saying complacent. But he was acknowledging that his life took some twists and turns. And instead of getting anxious about it every time and aggravated about it, he just finally said, you know what, Lord? Do what you do. Whatever you decide, whatever season you decide to have me in, I'm learning to adapt. I'm going to make myself content with whatever that season is. That's what Paul was alluding to, right? All right, moving on. 
So depending on our perspective, detours not necessarily do not necessarily act as a deterrent or of rejection. Let me explain that. Depending on our perspective, detours not, do not necessarily act as a deterrent of rejection or rejection. So when I was saying um, to detour or to deter, that is the question. How are we looking at the detours in our lives, right? So again, let's go back to the roadblocks. When I'm traveling somewhere, maybe I'm going to work, right? And maybe there's an accident and I see this detour. So I don't know that there's an accident up ahead or I don't know that there's construction up ahead, right? So I'm getting, but automatically I'm frustrated because I'm like, look, I got to get to work. And you know, you pick now. So let me tell you, this is me personally, right? I feel like when they're doing road work, why will you pick rush hour? Either evening rush hour or morning rush hour. Why do you pick rush hour time to be doing road construction? construction? Why not have a night crew after everybody's home sleeping, then y'all come out and work on the roads. Don't pick the time that I got to be going to work and I'm, you know, and, and I'm leave my house in plenty enough time all but to hit a roadblock. And listen, what's even worse? I've had this happen. I got enough. I got 15 minutes. I'm only 15 more minutes from work, but hit a construction that's going to sit me, have me sitting for an hour because we engine along and all. Yes, that is so frustrating, right? But here's the thing. Depending on our perspective, how are we looking at this detour? You know, and this is where some prayer is going to come in. This is where we're going to have to pray and say, okay, Lord, here's this block. Here's this roadblock. It's either for good. Is it, It's either for my good or for my bad. What, which, what, what is it for? So here's what, here's what we do. Um, is, is it acting as a deterrent? Is it trying to pre prevent me? You know, is that roadblock there? Because up ahead, um, for instance, when you have road work that needs to be done, let's just say I'm driving this same road to work and it's a raggedy road, right? There's a raggedy road and there's all kinds of potholes in this road, but it's the shortest distance to get me to my job one time. So because, you know, I'm not going to run over those, those potholes, I'm going to avoid them. So I'm just going to go around them, you know, and maybe 10, I, there's a street literally that, that we have to drive when I'm going downtown for something. But this one main strip, I don't know why this city will not fix that road. It is so many potholes. But it's the way, I, it's on my way. It's the direction that I need to go. The shortest direction is, of course, there's other directions. But this is the this more straight point, right? So I'm just going around. I know where they are, so I know to avoid them. I go around those, hot, those potholes, right? Here's the thing about that, though. Anything can happen that's going to cause me to be distracted and my mind is not on that pothole, but something distracts me. And then all of a sudden, boom, I done hit the pothole. Now, I've been traveling this road for how many years now? I know that pothole is there. What in the world? Something distracted me, though. And I hit that pothole. And now all this damage is done to my car. And I'm going to have to kick out some money to get it fixed because of this pothole. All right, so... The city decides, you know what, we're going to fix this street. And here I come down the same street, and now there is a blockage, a detour sign. Well, sometimes in our spiritual walk, there, God allows for a detour. Because, see, there's so many potholes. We've, we've become so complacent. We've become so comfortable with the normal way of life. And let me relate this to this. You can have people that are in relationships whether that be a love relationship with a, a spouse, a boyfriend, or a friendship relationship that's toxic, or whatever the situation or the scenario may be, it's not good, right? Even though I've been traveling and I'm, I'm so used to it, you know, we become, you know, uh, uh, then it becomes the norm, right? You know, bad habits can become normal habits, and you've been convincing yourself for so long that, oh, you know, well, I'm used to it now and don't phase me. Well, that still doesn't mean it's good for you. Just because you become used to it does not mean that it's good for you, right? So sometimes we can become complacent and I'm just letting the Holy Ghost leave me here. I have more written down. But sometimes we can become so complacent and we become comfortable in a bad situation that 
we just, you know, we're stuck there. Let me give this example. Um, I was, I love watching old TV shows. And one of my favorite sitcoms that make me laugh whenever I want to get a good laugh, one of my sitcoms that I love to watch is Stupid Martin. Martin Payne and Gina. And, you know, Shanae Nene and, and, and Mama Payne, they are so stupid, so I laugh. Um, the other show that I love to watch, an old a classic, is a Different World. Dwayne, the, the version with Dwayne and Whitley, you know, this was after Denise Huxtable was gone, but the newer version. So I like to watch those. So there was one episode I was watching of A Different World. And it was the episode when Chris Cross, the, the little rapping boys, back then they were popular. And so they had an episode, um, basically, make a long story short, there were some troubled kids and Freddie Brooks, if you all know her from this uh, episode, she was doing a good thing by getting mentors for these two little boys who were troubled children from the, um, from the hood, right? Well, Dwayne Dwayne was their Dwayne Wayne was their mentor. And so he was trying to teach them a lesson. They were like, they were rival gangs. They were from rival gang ter uh, territories. And so they didn't get along. The two boys didn't get along. And so Dwayne was trying to tell them, listen, your wife, your life is worth more than that. It's not about a piece of ter turf, or, you know, a territory, right? So they he gave them a story. He told them this analogy. And he said, there were these two grasshoppers and they were in this jar and you all probably already know where I'm going with this. They were in this jar and the jar had a lid on it and the grasshoppers, every time they would jump, they would bump their heads on this lid. So after so many times of bumping their head, they, you know, they became conditioned and they stopped jumping, right? Because they didn't want to hit their head anymore. They were afraid if I jump again, I'm going to hit my head. So they just became complacent, content. They adapted to their surroundings the way they were. Didn't like it, but I adapted to it, right? So one day, somebody took the lid off the jar. This is the analogy that Dwayne was giving to the two boys. Took the lid off the jar, and they were suddenly they were free. But because they became so conditioned to being confined to that jar, they were afraid to jump. They were a lot, they were set free, but they were afraid to jump. So I say that to say sometimes we can be so conditioned and, and, and stuck in a circumstance or a situation that we walked in fear for so long that we don't realize that Jesus Christ has come to set us free. We're free in him and we don't have to be afraid. And now when I, tell, when I tell you that the Holy Ghost gave this for me, he showed me that I've been walking in fear for so long. In certain scenarios in my life, I've been walk, walking in fear and I just convinced myself that it's all good. I've learned how to cope with it, right? But God says, no, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't die for you to just cope with life. I died for you to have life and have it more abundantly. I died for you to be free in me, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So listen, when he gave me that, when Dwayne Wayne used that analogy. We're in a jar with no lid. Listen, we're free. We're not even in the jar. We're, we're free. So come out of whatever complacency you may be in. Come out of whatever fear you may be walking in. That's the detour. Listen, going back to this detour, right? So sometimes we can look at that detour because we're so used to, to we're so used to the road that we're on. No, I know I'm familiar with this road. I'm comfortable with this road. And I'm gonna just use this, and this is a very uh, um, uh, a very tough one situation that a lot of people are in. So I'm praying for those that may be in abusive relationships. I use it as an example. Or well, alcoholism, right? There is freedom. There is freedom. But because our minds can be so conditioned uh, that we're stuck in this way, God will allow a detour to come into our lives. Because listen, he said he loves those. He loves he, his children that he loves, right? All that my father gave me, I won't lose one. So sometimes God will put that detour in our lives to force us to go another route. You know why? Because we've been too long avoiding that pothole. It's there in our lives. But I'll just deal with it this way. I'll just, you know, whatever that whatever that be, if, if it's an abusive relationship, oh, well, I just be careful not to, to make them mad. Or if you're in a friendship relationship and you have a... a a person that has a bully mentality, 
I'll just make sure they just go along with whatever they want. You know, we compromise, right? God, and we walk in fear, right? Whatever your situation may be, whatever it may be. I share with you all that the Lord delivered me uh, a week ago and, and really, I was just really felt free because I, I wasn't good with rejection. I wasn't good with people not liking me. And he set me free and gave me this, listen, I accept. Everybody isn't going to like me. Every, everybody is supposed to like me. It's okay. Who am I, right? <laughs> Who are you to think they like you? That's just the nature of this flesh that we live in. You can be the nicest person. Again, like I said, Jesus, he didn't do anything to anybody. He was a little baby and they wanted to kill him, right? Okay, moving right along. So I hope you're getting something out of this. Um, because I don't want to keep going. This is again, this is just part two. Uh, and I'm gonna finish up again on next Wednesday, but I want to read a little bit more of what God gave me. So we don't want to be complacent. Again, think of that road, that those potholes. There's a road in our life that God wants to repair. There's some things in our life that God wants to fix, but we have to be willing to take the detour and go the direction. And listen, the Holy Spirit is there for us. The word of God says he comes to lead, teach, and guide us in all ways of truth. Some things we become comfortable with doing it my way. But the Holy Ghost said, I need you to accept that you are free. And I want to now take you on a different road. There's a detour in your life. There's some twists and turns that I need to take in order for you to grow and get to where I need you to go to. I'm going to need you to come off of this road. And I'm going to need you to come up. Right? All right. So it depends on our perspective. How are we looking at that detour? This is where we need to pray and say, okay, Lord. This is a good, what it, for, for one thing, the word of God told us that all things work together for good. So whether we think the detour is a bad thing or a good thing, he said all things work together for good. Okay, so sometimes God will allow a detour to come because he's trying to keep us, you know, there may be something up ahead that we don't see. And he needs us to go a different direction. Right? Okay. So when we see a detour sign, it often causes frustration as an immediate response because it tends to throw us off course, our normal route, our comfort path, causing us to reject the detour route, only to be taken farther off course because we've attempted to create our ultimate detour. I'm going to stop reading right there and just close out with that. So because we reject the detour, we don't want to go, you know, the signs, you know, they have signs saying, go this way, go this way, go this way. And you're like, I don't want to go that way. I'm going to figure out another way. You know, have you ever done that? I've done that. I've avoided. You might say crazy. That's why you got the signs there. Why would you? Well, because it, the detour sign that they had, I know that sometimes I know that street and I don't want to go down that street because it may have too many traffic lights. You ever have a street where you're like, no, because that traffic light is way too long. You sit there for seem like 10 minutes before the light turned green. So I ain't going that way. Let me just figure out another way. And all but to end up, and when you try to fix, uh, you know, create your own way, how many times have you ended up right back <laughs> at the original detour sign? And you have to ultimately take the ones that they set out because there was no other route. So this is how God will do us. Sometimes when we don't want to take the detour, we will try to make, uh, make up our own alternative way. I'm going to go my own way. And the Lord will bring you right back to the detour that he set up. So, yes. So, this is why, what is your perspective? When the next detour in your life comes up, something, you know, you, you hit a, a roadblock, what we think is a roadblock or a detour. You know, Lord, what what is going on? You know, I'm, my life was going, you know, smooth. or I had finally become comfortable. I'm in my comfort zone. I don't like change. I don't like what. But God, you feel like God is moving you and he's pushing you out. I've been there. Where I was comfortable. And I'm like, no, I'm staying right here. But no, God will start causing a disturbance in your spirit. He'll start causing a disturbance. That's the detour. That's the detour. That's when you need to fall on your knees and pray and say, okay, Lord, you're trying to get my attention. This is where we have to pray and communicate with the Holy Ghost. And he will reveal to us every time. Listen, yes, I'm planning a detour in your life. It's time to move in this direction. So we have to be open to God and be uh, willing at times to take these detours. 
So, my friends, that is um, all that I have to say today. We will finish up on this topic of detours because there's so much more that I have written that the Holy Ghost just poured into my spirit on that day. But I hope what little bit that I've shared today has been enlightening, has been inspiring, and has been freeing. Remember the, the jar with the lid? We free. We're free people of God. Jump as high as you can jump in Jesus, right? And live a life that's thriving because I know I am. I know I am. So, again, my friends, thank you for joining me on my channel. I'm not in my swing chair again, as you can see. <laughs> Today is my day that I keep my grandchildren. It's my day off. So, every other week, I'm, I'm helping my daughters out with their children. So, I have to come down in my basement where it's a little bit more quiet because everybody's upstairs. But nevertheless, I'm excited to always be on this channel to just speak to you about something good that God has shared with me. So, as we always say on this channel, how about you say it with me? I am blessed. You are blessed. We are so, so blessed. And until next time, thank you, people of God. And I so am happy to have you. Take care.